Welcome to Tricked Out. I'm Andrew Totolis. On this show, I take some of the coolest modifications in the sport compact scene and show you what it takes to do it yourself. Today, I'm working with a 2003 Mitsubishi Evolution 8, and it is one of the baddest factory sport compacts on the planet. With 270 horsepower and full-time all-wheel drive, this baby lives to compete with the so-called true sports cars. Any mods you put on this beast have to look and perform at a first-class level. So today, I'm gonna show you some do-it-yourself finishing techniques that will transform ordinary parts into custom pro-quality mods at a fraction of the cost. For today's project, we're gonna be pulling some parts out of the car and giving them a pro-quality finish. It's gonna be pretty simple and a lot of fun. Before we get started, let's take a closer look at this bad boy. This 2003 Mitsubishi Evolution 8 belongs to Sarah Pepper. Rally Red Paint puts a low-key finish on the lightweight vented aluminum hood, and a large aftermarket intercooler looks menacing behind the lower grille. The Evo sits tight on lowered sports springs and stops quick with big factory binders all the way around. Tinted windows provide a cool, concealed cockpit for the passengers who enjoy factory designer sports seats, an upgraded stereo system, and an amp and sub box in the trunk to pump up the bass. Under the hood, the turbocharged engine pumps out 270 horsepower to all four wheels, and air flows freely through the cylinders thanks to a cold air intake. This is a fine ride indeed, but no car is truly complete until it's been tricked out. All right, one of the things you're gonna need for today's project is an oven. An oven, you ask? Well, with powder coating, you spray powder onto the part, and then you have to bake the powder into the metal by putting it into the oven. Now, don't do this into your mom's kitchen. You shouldn't bake car parts in an oven that you're gonna cook food in later, okay? Now, uh, you can pick up one of these at a used appliance store for about 100, 150 bucks. And remember, the bigger it is, the more parts you can get into it. So the bigger, the better. Besides the oven, you'll need a powder coating kit, plus paint stripper, acetone, scrapers and brushes for cleaning, and a set of standard shop tools to remove and replace the parts on the car. All right getting really anxious to get this project started. I'm gonna pull some car parts. I start pulling off any ugly parts that will fit into the oven and look hot with a trick custom color applied. When the easy parts are removed, I dig a little deeper to pull off the cold air intake pipes. I get a few brackets and hoses out of the way before I remove the valve cover and the exhaust manifold heat shield to finish up. Once you have all your parts over at the bench, you can start prepping them. You want to take off anything that you don't want to get powder coated, like this oil cap here. We have some grommets that we want to get rid of. But just like any other finishing technique, starting with a clean, even surface is the key to achieving a pro-quality powder coating job. So what I'm going to do is, anything that's already been painted in the car, like this valve cover or this intake tube, I'm going to use a heavy-duty aircraft stripper to get the paint off. Then I'm going to come back with an acetone and clean everything up nice and clean for our powder coat. Now don't forget, safety first. This stuff is heavy duty. If it can strip paint, imagine what it can do to your eye. Using the aircraft stripper is a piece of cake. I just spray a healthy dose on the parts, let it sit for a minute or so as the paint begins to bubble up, and then scrape the peeled paint off the surface. It usually takes a couple of applications to get all the paint off, plus one final run to get stubborn paint out of the cracks and crevices. After I repeat the process on the rest of the parts, I take them all to a sink and rinse off the biodegradable stripper. Then, it's back to the bench for a final wipe down with some acetone to finish up. Well, that does it. Now, I'm gonna show you a test so you know for certain that you're good to go. If I pour water on this piece of metal and it beads up, then I know that there's something still on this metal that's gonna hinder the powder coat from sticking, like wax on a car. When it rains, the wax protects your coat and it beads up. And in that situation, it's good. We don't want anything on this metal. So if I pour water on this metal and it doesn't beat up, you're good to go. Let's find out. Perfect. All right, we're about ready to start powder coating. I'm going to pull out some racks, and we'll see you back here in a minute. Why pay a 1000 bucks for Japanese? Welcome back to Tricked Out. If you're just tuning in, I am custom powder coating some factory parts out of a 2003 Mitsubishi Evolution. I've already pulled some likely suspects and cleaned them up. But anytime you're gonna paint a part, you wanna find a way to suspend them so you can get an even finish all the way around the part. Plus, with powder coating, these parts have to go directly into the oven to cook the powder into a smooth, hard, durable finish. So check out what I've done here. I welded myself a nice little stand out of rebar, pulled the oven rack out of the oven, and hung the parts up here with the hooks that came with the powder coating system. It's pretty nice. 
All right, enough with the parts. Let's get to the cool stuff, the powder coating system. This is the gun. Looks like a regular household drill, not too scary. This is the canister that holds the powder. It has its own fan, so you don't need a separate air compressor, which is mega cool. You plug it in, press the trigger, and you're powder coated. Now, listen, don't get excited. Read the instructions and the caution label, because this little tip right here, even though it doesn't look like anything, could shock the hoo-hoo-hoo out of you, you know what I'm saying? The powder is pre-mixed and ready to go, so I just dump it into the hopper. When it's ready, I snap the hopper back into the gun and lock it into place. Even though most of the powder is gonna stick to the parts, it's still a good idea to wear a respirator and eye protection because coating big parts can stir up quite a powder storm. When I'm geared up, I attach the ground wire from the gun to the oven rack, plug the powder gun in, and do the deed. The powder is a lot more forgiving than paint. It doesn't really matter how far the gun is from the part, I just try to lay it down evenly and make sure all of the parts are completely covered. All right, now that I'm done, I'm gonna put these into the oven, which I've already preheated to 400 degrees. Now, since I am baking metal and not an apple pie, I wanna make sure that one of these little pieces doesn't fall into the heating element and short out the oven. So, I'm gonna crank it off for just a second. Pop this in. Everything's stable, looks good. Crank it back to four. These need to cook for about 10 minutes after the powder liquefies. And it takes five minutes for the powder to liquefy, so that gives us... Carry the one. That's 15 minutes, right? It gives me a perfect amount of time to prep the next piece. I'm gonna hit up this valve cover. Now check this out. In the kit, they also include these silicone plugs, which go into the holes that are threaded so the paint doesn't go down there and ruin the threads. Okay, now I just have to cover these exposed holes, and then I'm gonna powder coat this baby in yellow. <laughs> For the big holes in the valve cover, I use special high temp masking tape that won't lose its grip inside the 400 degree oven. When the oil filler neck and the other openings are sealed up, I can lay down the powder, pull the first parts out of the oven, and get the yellow cover started. Once it's in the oven for a few minutes, you can really see the powder start to get shiny as it bubbles over. And by the time it's done, all of the graininess of the powder will dissolve into one smooth protective yellow finish. Yeah, that looks beautiful. All right, a couple more pieces to go. The last pieces to cook are the cold air intake pipes. And once the powder coat finish is baked on, these parts look good enough to eat. These look amazing. Now let me show you the difference between paint and powder coat. Before the show, I picked up this little bracket piece here and I suspended it and I painted it this lovely blue. Now, I did a rush job on the painting, but as you can see, I got a run here and I got one down here. Now, I could have avoided that by taking my time and doing a few thin layers of paint, but the fact is, is wet paint likes to run. With the powder coating, the powder sticks to the metal, so it doesn't matter if this piece is hanging upside down, diagonal, it doesn't matter which way, powder is dry, so it's not gonna run. Also, check this out. I got this scratch off, and with very little pressure, can make a nice scratch in this paint. Check that out. Ooh, that's ugly. Let's try that with the powder coating. Nothing. Proves that it's tougher than paint, so it's gonna last a lot longer. Now, I can't wait to get these parts back on the car, but I got a little bit of prep work before that. There's no trick to putting the parts back together. I just have to reinstall all of the little bits and pieces that I took off at the bench, remove my masking materials, and rebuild the valve cover. Back at the car, I spray a little lubricant on the valve cover seal, bring in the cover, and reinstall all of the other parts just like they came off. Once all of the parts are bolted back in, I can finally admire the results. Man, this looks amazing. And people are gonna wonder how much the car owner Sarah paid for these custom parts. And she didn't. The powder coating makes all the difference. Neck the trick out. This is where I feed your need for speed. I'm Andrew Totolis. I've been having a great time on today's show, tricking out a 2003 Mitsubishi Evolution by turning standard car parts into cool and tough custom powder coated parts. So far, everything I've done has been under the hood, but let's switch gears here for a bit. Another hot mod that people do on the Evo is to swap out the headlights for a set of JDM or Japanese domestic market black housing lights. Now these look uber cool, but Mitsubishi only puts them on the cars that stay in Japan. You can pick up a set here in the US, but it costs about a thousand bucks. It's quite a high price tag. I'm not paying it, are you? Didn't think so. But check it. 
Since I have the oven here in the shop, I'm gonna show you how to bake apart the headlights and paint them black for a killer JDM look for under 10 bucks. Now, even if you don't have an Evo, you can do this treatment on a lot of other headlights. So stick around, you're gonna wanna check this out. The first step in getting the headlights out of the Evo is we have to pull the front bumper cover off. Now, you don't have to do this on every car, but a car this well put together, sometimes you gotta do a little extra work. The Evo's bumper cover is attached, like most of them, with a few fasteners around the edges and a bolt on each side in the fender well. After I get them all out, I can pull the bumper cover forward and pop off the intercooler sprayer line to release it from the car. To remove the headlights, there are a few bolts to back out around the edges before I pull the housing forward, unplug the wiring from behind the lights, and repeat the process on the other side. Now that I got the light off, I can show you what I'm up to here. I am after this piece in the middle, the chrome piece behind the lens. But to do that, I have to take off the lens, which is held on by glue. And that's where the oven comes in. When I put it in the oven, the glue will soften, making it a lot easier for me to take the lens off and get the part I want. But before I put it into the oven, I want to remove anything I think might be affected by the heat. Stripping the headlight housings on this Evo is a little more complicated than the average car because these HID bulbs have ballasts, which supply the super hot voltage necessary to spark the xenon gas. Now that I've got everything off the lights that can melt, time to start cooking. What I'm gonna do is take some damp towels, not dripping wet, but damp, and I'm gonna put them on a cookie sheet to help protect the light. All right. And take the light, put it face down. I've already got my oven preheated to 225. Now, if you wanna make sure your temperature is correct, Pick up an uh, oven thermometer, they're pretty cheap. Last thing you want to do is melt your headlights. After about 10 minutes, you can take the light out of the oven and immediately start prying the lens off the housing. It takes a little muscle to pry the lens off the housing, and sometimes the heat of the oven isn't enough to unseal the deal. And with the heat gun, you always want to keep it moving, because this can get really hot enough to melt the plastic. I like to put it in the oven to get the whole thing up to temp, but if I need some help, the heat gun's a good tool. Eventually, with enough heat and pressure, the seal will start to open up. Once the housing is apart, I pull the chrome pieces out and get them ready to paint. Once you have all your pieces on the table, you want to clean them with alcohol to get rid of any oil, any fingerprints, or residue. Now, most of the time, you have to sand and prime a piece before you paint it. But we spent a couple extra dollars on a spray paint that you don't have to do that with, which is cool because these corners and crevices are really hard to get in there and sand. Let's get to it. Like any good paint job, I lay down several light, even coats. The first is a fog coat, and I do it as thin as I can while still covering the whole part. When this dries, it will provide some teeth for the thicker coats to dig into and prevent runs. After three coats, it looks like the parts are ready to go. These look great. Now that they're dry, I'm gonna put the lights back together again. After I pop the yellow lens in and replace the small reflector, I finally get to see what this is gonna look like. That is nice. I clean any fingerprints off the lens before I apply a fresh bead of silicone sealant where the lens meets the housing and press the lens into the fresh silicone. I put the headlights back into the oven at the same temp, 225 degrees, for about 10 minutes to get a good bond with the factory adhesive. When they come out, I press the lens against the housing again to make the seal permanent. After the housings cool off, I reinstall the electronics. All right, let's check it out. That is cool. Now let's give this Evo back its eyes. Since I painted the factory headlights instead of buying a new set, installing them is just a matter of replacing all the bolts and fasteners that I removed to take them out. When both of the lights are back in place, I slide the bumper cover back on and take a look at the results. Man, these lights look sick. You know when I was installing them, I was looking at the powder coating job we did here in the engine? I got this crazy idea in my head. I want to powder coat the wheels. Replacing your wheels. Welcome back to Tricked Out. This is where I show you how to mod out your sport compact car. I'm Andrew Totolis. Today, I have been having a blast customizing a 2003 Mitsubishi Evo by turning ordinary metal car parts into cool, tough, custom powder-coated parts. Now, it's really changing the way the car looks under the hood, but I want to do something to make this car stand out while it's rolling down the street. So I brought you out here behind the shop to show you something that can make my powder-coated wheel dreams become a reality. This is a propane oven. It was made out of an old 55-gallon steel drum. 
And we used to use it to cook tasty lunches, but I think it's time to convert it to a higher power. Now, I don't know who made this oven, but they did a pretty good job. They put a temperature gauge in here, which is going to be great because it's going to give us an accurate temperature reading, which will help us out quite a bit. Also, when you look inside, it's not your standard grill. There's no rack. There's no open flame. He put a flat surface in here to make it more like an oven. This guy did a really good job. Maybe he's an oven maker now. I don't know. If you want to know how to make one of these ovens or just find out how we do all these cool projects here on Tricked Out, even though these wheels look like bare metal, they're actually coated with a clear protective finish, so they have to be stripped just like the smaller parts that I powder coated inside. Pulling the tires off the rims costs about 10 bucks by itself, but if you wait to do this project when you're getting new tires anyway, you won't have to pay any extra cash to get them swapped and balanced. When all of the clear paint is loose from the rims, I rinse them with fresh water to get them ready to powder. Once you got the wheels stripped down, washed, and dried off, go over it with an acetone to get rid of any residue that might keep the powder coat from sticking. The rest of the process is easy sleazy. I just spray the powder in an even coat on the inside, and when it looks like everything is covered without being lumpy anywhere, the first wheel is ready to go into the oven. All right, we're up to 400 degrees. We're ready to start cooking. Uh -huh, look at this. Notice another little piece of drive shaft that I put in here to put the wheel on so it doesn't lay flat on the, on the bottom here so it cooks evenly all the way around. Excellent. All right, now if you want to spice it up, you can add some paprika or something. No, I'm kidding. All right. Um, okay. Now while that was cooking, let's prepare the next one. Once you get the hang of using the powder gun, it's easy to see why I like powder coating a lot better than paint. And before you know it, you'll be powdering like a pro. All right, that one is ready to go. Got a little assembly line work in here. Now, as far as cooking these things, you wanna leave it in there for about uh, 10 minutes, the powder coat's gonna start to flow, and then you wanna leave it 20 minutes after that, which is about 30 minutes, which is about now. So let's see how she looks. Oh, nice. That's good stuff. Right. I'm gonna miss getting some killer grub out of this oven, but I'm willing to trade off a good lunch for a set of hot custom wheels. And besides, there's more than one way to cook a steak. Who's hungry? After the tires are mounted on the freshly powder coated wheels, I bolt them back onto the Evo to complete today's project. Man, these look slick. And I followed my own advice and picked up a new set of tires, so I got them mounted and balanced for free. I gotta stop, otherwise I'm gonna powder coat everything I see. So let's run down the cost of today's project. The powder coating kit cost about 180 bucks. The no prep paint for the headlights added in another $8, and the silicone sealant is about five bucks, which brings the total cost for today's project to $193. For what we did today, that is chump change. The powder coating alone would have cost about 700 bucks, and let's not forget about the lights, which would cost about 1,000 bucks for a quality set. So by doing the project ourselves, we saved about 1,700 bucks. Remember, you can find out how we do all the projects here on Tricked Out by visiting us at our website at DIYNetwork.com. For all of us here in the shop, thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next time.